want to digitally color your comic but feeling a little intimidated? Follow along with my mini tutorial where I'll give you some tips and tricks to get you started. Daphne here and welcome back to my channel. Before we get started, check out my artwork at the galleries and social media sites next to me on the side here. And don't forget to subscribe and click on the notification bell so you get notified whenever I upload a new video. And as always, there's free comics waiting for you at the link in the description box below, so don't forget to sign up for them. So since quarantine started March 15th, I had been working on various projects trying to keep myself distracted from everything that's going on especially not being able to go outside on a whim. What I realized was because of this, I had ended up with a lot of extra time that I realized I could use to do something I had been meaning to do for a while, but just didn't have the wherewithal to do it. What I'm talking about is coloring my comic digitally. Now, I know it might be surprising to think that this is something I haven't been in the habit of doing, but coloring prints is a lot different than coloring comic pages. And for the longest time, I really didn't think that I could really put in the effort. Instead of just one static image, I was now dealing with panels that still needed to be readable in color, which meant that I realized my style was far from appropriate for the task. I had first tried coloring the first issue of my comic, Ego Raven, Heir of the First Unicorn, a while ago, but lost all the files in a hard drive crash. Just as well since I wasn't happy with the results at all and thought my coloring style was way too busy, nonsensical, and just took way too long to lend itself towards a visually readable comic. This time around, I really felt I should give it another go, since I finally want to offer up Ego Raven as a printed comic on Kickstarter. And as much as I could have just offered up the comic in black and white, there was just too much evidence pointing to the fact that most people just prefer their comics to be in color, in spite of how much manga they grew up reading. If I wanted to get my project on Kickstarter, I realized it had to be in color and I had to do it right. So I spent some time finding comic coloring tutorials on YouTube and realizing I had been making this a lot more complicated than it really needed to be. Which makes sense. If you're a professional colorist, you don't have the luxury to fuss and muss. You need to get your work done to deadline and still have a visually attractive final product. I had been so worried about all the detail I had put in my pages and was not looking forward to having to color in every little thing and all that time it would potentially take. I had been so worried about all the detail I had to put in my pages and I was not looking forward to having to color in every little thing, much less all the time it would potentially take. And that was the first light bulb moment that made me decide I could color in a comic in a somewhat reasonable manner. And it was the simplest thing. It was the kiss method. Keep it simple, stupid. And with that new way of thinking, I set forth to finally jump what I felt was a major hurdle I had in my comics production toolkit. The first thing we are going to do is open up our comic page at 11 by 17 and 300 DPI. Because we are working with a full size page, 300 DPI will be sufficient for the final print. Why not go to 600 DPI for better results, you ask? Well, that's because working at 600 DPI really doesn't add to the quality at this size and only serves to choke out my processor, making coloring difficult. Now we're going to prep our inks by going into the Channels tab and selecting the RGB channel. What this does is select all the white on the page, but what we really want is all the black lines. So the next thing we do is go to select and inverse to select all the black lines. Once we do that, create a new layer and with the selection still active, get the paint bucket tool and fill the layer in with black. Now you have a transparent ink layer to color under. Another way you can do this is just to go to your initial page layer and just change the settings to multiply, which will give you the same result in less steps. Next, create another layer and bucket fill with a neutral color that we will use as your flat space. 
The difference between the channel ink layer and the multiply layer is that you can't color the lines when your image is in multiply mode. Once you decide which ink layer you are going to use, turn off the one you're not using. This will be your ink backup just in case. But as you can see, if you click the lock in the channel layer, it will allow you to color your ink lines. Next, we're going to create a new layer above the channel ink layer and press Alt while hovering between the two layers. An arrow appears and when you click, this connects the layers and now you have a clipping mask over your inks. I know this looks redundant, but what that allows you to do is color in your lines without affecting your original ink layer, which is very handy if you make a mistake. Next, we're going to prep the page further for coloring by blocking out the panels. Go to your flats layer and choose a color that will stand out from the base color. In this case, I chose a light green. Take your lasso tool and hold down the Alt key to create straight lines with the lasso. What this allows you to do is compensate for imperfect lines that the regular marquee tool will not be able to line up with. Follow the edges, then fill with your color. Continue with all your panels. What I like to do is then fill in the remainder of the page with white. Next, I am going to open up a previous page I had already completed so I can select the exact colors to use and keep all the colors on all the pages consistent. I am then going to go back to my lasso tool and start tracing out the area that I want to fill in. When I go to fill the area, I make sure that all the paint bucket options are unchecked because you do not want any aliasing affecting the edges of your flats. The idea is to make sure all your colors cleanly fill against each other as you fill them in. Now when I first started coloring, I was always using the pencil tool because I thought it was giving me the same effect. But once I started to practice with the lasso tool, what I noticed was that my fills were much easier to do and the lasso can give me nice sharp edges while the pencil tended to round out. Also, I can do all my selections at once and fill at the same time, while with the pencil I had to do every selection individually. So using the lasso is a massive time saver. Once we have our flats done, I am going to duplicate the layer and turn it off. This will be my original flats layer. Like the duplicate ink layer, we are only keeping these just in case we make a mistake and need to refer back to the original layers to fix. Next, we are going to create a new layer for our shadows. Now here is where it gets a little tricky. For shadows, I use this lavender color. I experimented a lot to get this color that will convert into a proper shade once I turn the multiply option on. Different colors will give you different effects, so if you need to, experiment a bit. Now I go back to my lasso tool and draw out all the areas I want the shadows to be. Holding down shift will allow you to add all your selections together. Once my selections are done, I fill in everything with the lavender color. Of course, the panel looks pretty wacky right now, but look what happens when I turn the multiply option on. Instant shadows. But I realize at this point that I'm not happy with these shades. The character is outside in moonlight, so I want the shadows to be a little more dramatic. I turn the layer back to the default setting and decide to change the lavender to a blue color instead. Turn multiply back on and the shadows are exactly what I'm looking for and completely changes the mood of the panel. Again, experiment with different colors to see what effects you get. Next is the highlights. 
Same as before, create a new layer and believe it or not, use the same lavender to fill in your highlight sections. This time, we are changing the layer option to luminosity, which does something completely different to the exact same color we used before. I realize that I'm again not happy with the highlight on the scales. So what I do is select just that area and experiment with another color until I get the effect I want. Again, different colors give different effects. Now, one of the things I had a hang up on was how I was going to color in the backgrounds. I was really uptight at thinking I had to color in every little doohickey and just the thought of it made me sweat. But what I learned from looking at samples of Pro Comic coloring was that I didn't need to do that at all. The background is just that. And unless there is something specific you wanted to draw the reader's eye to, just using really basic flat shades really did the trick. I saw one sample where the colorist used monochromatic colors for the backgrounds and only used full color on the characters. There was absolutely no reason why I had to add more work for myself. Now we come to the part where we need to color in the lines. First, I choose my color from a previous page again for consistency. Then I select and activate my color hold layer. The color hold is the clipping layer we attach to the ink channel layer at the beginning of the demo. Using the lasso tool, I select the lines I want to color in, then use the bucket tool to fill in the color. At this point, I just continue finishing up until I get my completed page. Now to just do it 31 more times. So I hope you found this video enjoyable and informative. So until the next video, bye.